Good morning. Welcome to our service as we gather here at Grace United Methodist Church in Gaithersburg, Maryland, along with Deacon Helen Ballou and Betsy Moore, who just played the carol on so beautifully with us, and Larry and John and Kevin back there in our sound and all of our wellness guys, welcome. I hope you feel welcome already here. So glad to have you here. And for all who are joining us uh, online, we consider this a true honor to have this opportunity to lead you in worship. And just as was played, to take time to be holy, I'm so thankful that you are taking this time to give thanks unto God. I give thanks for your presence, and perhaps this is your first Sunday joining us. For all of you uh, gathering here in person, thank you. I really appreciate all the, the safety protocols you've gone through here, and I know that's, that's different than many of us are accustomed to, but so important that we are keeping one another safe and that we are modeling for others what that looks like. So thank you for your willingness to participate and to be here. And to all who are joining us online, we again welcome you. Perhaps this is your first Sunday here. We invite you to visit our webpage at graceumc.org, and that'll tell you about all the wonderful ministries that are happening here at Grace. There's a, there's a misnomer about summertime that somehow it slows down. Uh, I don't know if that's happening in your world, but uh, in, the, in the ministries of the church, why it keeps going. So I hope that you're finding time to replenish along the way. Last Sunday, I had the opportunity to do so, and I want to thank Deacon Helen for leading you in worship and for the opportunity to recharge. And so it is my prayer that through this time of worship, this honoring of Sabbath, this taking time to refuel spiritually, that we will do just that in order that we may glorify God all the more in whatever setting we are living that God is calling us to. Welcome to our service. Now let us take time to prepare and center ourselves as Betsy shares with us our morning prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to God. We thank God for joy, for laughter, 
for abundant blessings of every kind. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. We thank God when we can and as we can for struggles, for solitude, for fears. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank God that in Christ, our joys as well as our pain, our losses as well as our laughter, are in God's heart and hands. Let us pray. O Lord our God, though we are as little children, not fully able to discern the spiritual forces coming in and out of our lives, you have chosen us as your people. Give your servants understanding minds to discern between the good and evil surrounding us each day, that we may choose what is good and pleasing in your sight. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able for our first hymn, Be Thou My Vision, number 451. Please be seated. Thank you. This time I'd like to invite all our young children to join me up front for this morning's children's message. Would you join me here? How's everybody? Good. Good. All right. Some are going well. I know. It feels like it's ending, doesn't it? It's going by so fast. Well, you made it, did you? Huh? I don't know. Welcome. Yeah. Glad you're here. Sure. Well, I hope your summer is going well and you're right. It goes by so quickly here. Now, do you recognize what I brought here? Candles. Candles. That's right. I know, and this is a particular candle, and I brought as a birthday candle. Anybody celebrating birthdays here? So I know one little one later this month, yeah, so we celebrate our birthdays. I like the symbol of candles, as we have them behind me as well, because candles, they remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. And knowing that he is our light means that he's always there to guide us. Whether we're here at church, 
whether we're at school, which you're right, it's around the corner here, wherever we're at, Jesus is there for us. And that's important to remember. Now, of course, with the birthday candles, we do what? We light them, blow them out. Wait a minute. There's something we do before that, though, don't we? We make a wish, that's right. What sort of things might we wish for? Well, we could spend a lot of time doing that, couldn't we? And have fun thinking about those things, and then we blow them out. Well, I was reading about Solomon in particular, and I wanted to share where he had an opportunity to make a wish. And I'm reading from 1 Kings and talking about Solomon and some King David. Now, as a king, you can imagine royalty probably had a lot of nice things, didn't they? And you could just imagine what they might wish for. But then when God asked Solomon what he wanted, he said the following. He said, God, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he is faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on its throne this very day, speaking of himself. Then he continued, and here's his wish. He says, Now, Lord my God, you've made your servant king in place of my father David, but I'm an only little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant here is among the people you have chosen a great people, too numerous to count or number. So he's feeling a bit overwhelmed there, isn't he? I mean, I'm going to be king after all, child, and all that he has to do. So then he asked the following, So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. Give me a discerning heart. Solomon's wish, he could have wished for all those things we might wish for on our birthdays, toys and games and such. But what he wished for was for God to guide him in his decisions. He becomes well known for his wisdom. And I think that's a powerful tool to remind us what we hope for, and hope's an even stronger word than wish as Christians, is that we can live lives that honor God, that carry out God's will. So amongst all our wishes, whenever your, your birthday comes around, may the true desire of our hearts always be for God's guidance, for God's wisdom to be what we honor and apply. Okay? Now, do we just have candles, or are they usually on something at a birthday? A cake. A cake in particular. Now, I thought cake might be a tad messy, not, not for you all, but for one near and dear to me who comes up here. So it's my, uh, my form of cake here, okay? All right. So take and enjoy, and thank you for being part of our gathering today. Um, We are indeed grateful for God's wisdom. Today we will be focusing on the book of Ephesians. I'll be reading from the fifth chapter, starting with the 15th verse. I invite you to hear these words. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to pray with me. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you that you make yourself known to us for all these wonderful means of grace that you provide when we gather to to worship when we think about the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion, 
gathering in Christian fellowship. Knowing the, the gift of prayer, the practices such as fasting, all these are means of grace. Yet the primary means is through your word. We thank you for these words that you give us in this book of Ephesians. Thank you for Paul and for all your servants that you have worked through to bring us your word. And then this Holy Scripture remind us that yours is a living word, an active word, sharper than a two-edged sword. So we pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit that first inspired these words so long ago will speak to our hearts, to our situations right where we're at today. May we be open to all that you have to share with us as we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Be careful. These are always the parting words I offer to my loved ones whenever they are leaving to go somewhere. Be careful. Now, that statement can include a lot of things. Be careful how you drive. Be careful for the other guy out there driving. Be careful what you do. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. All encompassed in that statement to be careful. Paul, I think, encompasses a lot in saying these very words to us through the scriptures today. Be careful. Be careful how you live. Be careful how you live for the days are evil. To be careful. How are we called to do that? How do we follow the, the wisdom of God that I was speaking of to the children? I like how one author, Charles Leary, put it. He used the distinction between the vulture and the hummingbird. In an article he wrote, be careful be careful how you live. He writes, there are two birds that fly over our nation's deserts. One is the hummingbird, the other is the vulture. The vultures find the rotting meat of the desert because that, that's what they look for. They thrive on, on that diet, but hummingbirds, well, they ignore the smelly flesh of dead animals. Instead, they, they look for colorful blossoms of desert plants. The vultures live on what was. They live on the past. They fill themselves with what is dead and gone. But hummingbirds, well, they live on what is. They, they seek new life. They fill themselves with freshness and life. Each bird finds what it's looking for. We all do. So I ask you, what are you looking for? What are we looking for as a church? That is the essence of Paul's teaching. In life, there are two birds. The one bird looks for foolishness, stupidity. The other looks for wisdom. The vultures seek to fill themselves with the rotting flesh of drunkenness and debauchery. The hummingbird sobriety, freshness, and the spirit. In the desert of this world, you have your scavengers who are angry and ungrateful, but you also have those who hum a grateful hymn of thanksgiving. The irony is that you find what you're looking for. So in this fifth chapter of Ephesians, Paul outlines proper behavior for good living. In our short passage that we just read, he admonishes his readers to be careful how they live. He's brief and to the point. Three things we must do. Be wise, be sober, and be thankful. Well, it's a short list. But if we can orient our daily lives around these three, be wise, be sober, be thankful, will transform not only our lives, but also the lives of our families, friends, church family, and neighbors. So again, Paul offers these three admonitions. Be careful how you live. That is, be wise. Be careful how you live. Be sober. Be careful how you live. Be thankful. 
So to be wise. To be lies in our living because Paul says the days are evil. Just as we pray each week in our Lord's Prayer, deliver us from evil. God is there to guide us, to deliver us, to help us overcome all that is evil. We, we say it in, in, in our baptismal vows that we will address all that is evil, all that is oppressed. And as we think of what and who is oppressed in our world today, we, we as the church support. We as the church resist where there is oppression. The fact that there are children who will go to school hungry right here in Montgomery County is something that we must resist. We must minister to. The fact that there are children, there are families homeless in our county is something that we must react to. We as the church are called to be open to all the ways that God's wisdom is guiding us. I think of the people of Haiti and how our hearts go out to them in this time. I am so grateful for what has been established in our own relationship as a church with the people of Haiti. These doors will be avenues and will keep you tuned in the ways that we can be helping in times of crises where things were bad before now, victims of earthquake. Our hearts and God and God's wisdom will show us how to live out our lives. Be careful. Be careful, Paul says, in how you live. Today we'll be honoring, we're thinking of all of our graduates. Some will be leaving this week to travel to school. Those of you going at a distance to school, some of you staying locally, starting right here. Some of you are starting new professions. Some of you are going into the military. And as we think of all of you, Paul gives us this instruction to be wise, which means to orient ourselves to the teachings of God. When you go to campus, or when you start a new job, there is that that time of orientation. You learn the layout of of the campus, you learn where the dorms are, where the meals are, where, where the classrooms are, all the expectations that schooling will bring. Or on a new job, what is expected of you, what will be your responsibilities. There will be those there who will orient you. What we have what Paul is writing about, what he's calling us to when he tells us to be careful and to be wise in our living as we have Jesus the Christ to guide us, to orient us in our daily living. So our words, so our actions, and so what we do together as a church community can be as effectively and beyond humanly possible. You have participated, so many of you, in the life of this church where you have received that that orientation, but it's more than taking in. Professor Burkhardt Du Bois shares the following about it's more than orienting ourselves. He is a professor who has done much in this article. In fact, it's called... Fred Craddock talks about how he overhearing the gospel. Du Bois was the great black educator, sociologist, historian. Upon completion of his studies at Fisk, Harvard, and even University of Berlin, he was convinced that change in the condition of the American black could be affected by careful scientific investigations into the truth about the black culture in America, about the black person in America. So he proceeded. His research was flawless, and his graphs and charts impeccable, but after waiting several years and hearing not the slightest stir of reform, Dr. Du Bois had to accept the truth about truth. Its being available does not mean it will be appropriated. We have had the teachings of God, the wisdom of God, 
has been made available to all of us, and I give thanks for how you've been nurtured in the faith as I think of you going, going off to school, going off into new careers, going off into school locally here. You have received so much, but oh, how important it is that you continue to appropriate it, that you continue to allow God's Holy Spirit to guide you in your everyday living. That's the wisdom of God that is available to all of us. This is the wisdom of a God that we will learn through the stories. In just a couple of weeks, you're going to be hearing stories of those who are participating in our work against racism. For we each have a story to tell on how God is using our lives to overcome. Where you're going, in school, in career, this will be your mission field. This will be your opportunity to allow the light of Christ to shine through you. But for those of you who may be tuning this out thinking, well, the college days were a long time ago for me, or I've been in my career, or I'm looking back at my career, God has a message for all of us. I'm reminded of this when I think about, just not far from us, the county fair that is taking place right here in, in Gaithersburg. For years at Trinity, I helped with the chicken booth at that fair. I didn't want to see chicken after those 10 days that we spent there. It was very good, but you just got, just got tired of it. But what I remember is wonderful ministry. I'd have folks I wouldn't see all year in church, but they'd be there to work the chicken booth at the fair. Or sometimes somebody brand new to church that didn't even know anybody in the congregation would come and would jump right in and would be for a great time of fellowship. What I loved about going to the fair, and I would go by the various shifts to see the fair at night with all the rides lit up and all, just beautiful. Or I would go early in the morning to help with the breakfast shift, and then it would be very quiet, just the, just the animals stirring, making our way around the fair. You see all the various ones. They had a dunk tank, for example. We did that as a local church once. Yours truly got to be in the dunk tank. I couldn't believe it. These dear persons, I'll never forget her, this one pat, this wonderful grandmotherly person was giving her little grandson extra money just so he could have more attempts to throw that ball and dump me in the tank. Even my own family were taking turns at throwing at that, and that water was cold all part of ministry. Of course, you have the fortune tellers at the fair. There was one fellow, he went to the fortune teller and, and trying to trick him, the fellow said, so when will my life end, he asked the fortune teller. Looked at his crystal ball and said, your life will end when you die. <laughs> the man wasn't gonna give in to that, so he said, to the fortune, I said, but will I be happy? The fortune teller looked right at him and said, the future has nothing to do with that. It's what you're doing in the present that will determine your happiness. Too often we put our happiness to that someday, after school, after I retire, after kids are raised, when the blessings, the strength that is ours to know is what's happening this day and the opportunity that God is giving us to practice God's wisdom. Paul warns, he says, be careful, don't, don't be drunk with wine or debauchery. Debauchery being sexual activity. Instead, instead be open to the Spirit's leading. See in verse 18, do not get drunk with wine, for that's debauchery, but be filled, be filled with the Spirit. This drunkenness, of course, is metaphor. When we're out of touch with our vocation, it moves us through these evil times as one who's intoxicated and engaging in regrettable behaviors. Drunkenness is the condition of being unfocused, off balance, and out of kilter with what God wants for you. God's will is for us to choose to be happy this day. And every day, 
to believe the gospel, to cherish the truth that in all things God is with us and we can be victorious in any circumstance. That does not mean that we will not go through difficult times. It means that we will not let our circumstances determine how we look at life. Rather, we will let our faith determine how we look at our circumstances. What this unknown author was saying, don't let the circumstances of your life or of this world dictate whether or not we are experiencing true happiness, which is found in our relationship with Jesus Christ. But let that relationship guide us in every decision, in every day living. God is giving us this opportunity. So graduates, this is a powerful opportunity. So much to think about. So much unknown right now. Easy for me to stand here and say that. You're the ones facing a new semester, a new school, a new way of living, or a new profession, or a new life in the military. Whatever that's going to look like, know that God is going to use you in powerful ways. God is going to use each and every one of us if we are open. But have we let the drunkenness, that is, have we let anything dull us in our relationship with God? In this time, in this moment, may we renew that relationship, allowing God's wisdom to once again be the primary source of grace, that we look to God first, not as a last act of desperation. As events of our world, as we pray for what's happening in Afghanistan, as we pray for the people of Haiti, as we pray and look to God in the time of crises, whatever you may be facing, you are not facing it alone. And when we pause to give thanks, as Paul instructs us, not saying thanks for what, something terrible that's happened to you, I don't mean that, but in the midst of that battle to give thanks, we are reminded that we are not facing it with our own strength, but through God's strength. And we are given God's vision to see the world in a different way. This person writes how other than the Bible, his famous favorite book of all times is To Kill a Mockingbird. He writes, I love both the book and the movie. The main character, the one who tells the story, is a little girl named Jean Louise Finch, who goes by the name of Scout. Her father, Atticus Finch, is the town's lawyer and a man of deep principles and integrity. I always wanted to grow up and be like Atticus Finch. One day, Scout came home from school and told her father about some problems she was having with the teacher and several other students. In an effort to help her get along better with others, Atticus gave her this advice. First of all, if you can learn a simple trick, Scout, you'll get along a lot better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until you consider things from their point of view, until you climb into their skin and walk around in it. What a different view. That's, that's exactly what, what Jesus did, clothed in human flesh after all. Jesus felt pain as we feel pain. He suffered as we suffer. He even experienced death. None of us have. Jesus climbed into our skin and walked around in it. Sometimes we just want to tell somebody to be quiet when they say, I know what you're going through, because they don't. But he does. He faced it all in order to be there for us, in order to show us there is another way. When you face those moments of struggle and you don't go through this life and not, no, you do not face them alone. And when we see and try to reach out to someone who is struggling, sometimes we think how difficult it must be. 
I know when we've had our, our conversations and, and then talking about racism, for example, and we've talked about, about privilege, I, I've had, and I believe and I've heard the stories, people say, well, you know, I struggled. I've been through terrible times, whether you grew up in the Depression or went through, and that's so, that's true, that's very true. But imagine if you were a person of color facing those same situations. How much more? When we put ourselves the best we can in another person's skin, when we try to see and when we allow ourselves to see others as God sees others, we realize that our growing and our faith with God and our growing as a community won't take from you, but when we work to overcome whatever it is that is oppressing in our nation, in our world today, our own lives will be enhanced. That's what Paul was talking about here when he said, be wise. Be careful in how you live. Be wise. Do not be drunk, but be filled with the Spirit and be thankful. When you are giving thanks to God, you are availing yourself to God. Don't wait till the semester's over, till you have the degree, till you're retired from the job, until the children are raised. This day, this day, avail yourself to God. I love how Paul talks about how we sing our praise to God, and there's something about that, and I know that's been the most frustrating thing with all the changes we've had to go through with COVID. The, the singing is that last one. I know uh, masking and singing d d doesn't work well, but we're going to get there to that time when we won't have to do that. But singing, offering our praise to God does something more. It's not just the quality. I've I give thanks for how our, our choir and what they have offered and Debbie has put together through the anthems that, that you've heard online, and it's been amazing. But I also know our choir is a, choirs are a ministry where they care for one another, where you gather in community, where you're singing and preparing for worship. Yes, that's important, but you're there for one another. And that's who we are as a church, what we do in worship, what we do in ministry with others builds our own community as well. Archbishop Desmond Tutu used the term Ubuntu to describe this. The South African concept of Ubuntu says, as he defined it, it is to say my humanity is caught up, is bound up in yours. We belong in a bundle of life. We say a person is a person through other persons. It is not I think, therefore I am. It is rather I am human because I belong, I participate, I share. A person with Ubuntu is open and available to others, affirming of others, for he or she has a proper self-assurance that comes from knowing that he or she belongs in a greater whole and is diminished when others are humiliated or diminished or treated as if they were less than they are. As a community, as Paul reminds us, when we are careful in our living, we cause no harm. Rather, we are called and do offer good, and our relationship with God is enhanced. This morning, graduates, be careful. We love you. Be careful in how you live. Rely upon God's wisdom. Don't be drunk. Be sober and alert and practice thankfulness in your daily walk with God. And God will continue as you are and will be a blessing to this community. God is going to use your life to bless the lives of others. For this we give thanks and praise. Amen. Now we'll have a special music that's offered by Paul Moore that talks about reaching out to our neighbor. Reach out to your neighbor, let them know you really care. Reach out when they're lonely, let them know somebody's there. Reach out in their darkness when the clouds obscure their view just walk with them and talk with them they're waiting there for you reach out in a world filled with hopelessness and pain reach out with a heart full of Reach out, the world is waiting. 
feel for someone to lead the way. Reach out, reach out to find a brand new day. Reach out to a stranger, to someone who's lost their way. Like a sheep without a shepherd, who can't find the light of day. Reach out, somebody needs you, need to know they're not alone. So tell them of God's mighty love, and share with them your own. Reach out in a world filled with hopelessness and pain. Reach out with a heart full of love. Reach out, the world is waiting for someone to lead the way. Reach out, reach out to find a brand new day. Reach out like your Savior when he gave his life for you. Reach out to all the people who don't know what to do. Reach out and tell of Jesus who has done his greatest part. Just share the love I'm singing of. Reach out with all your heart. Reach out in a world filled with hopelessness and pain. Reach out with a heart full of love. Reach out, the world is waiting for someone to lead the way. Reach out, reach out to find a brand new day. Thank you, Paul, so much. This time I'm going to invite Deacon Helen to join us here, and all those who are those I spoke of about our graduates who will be going to school, whether you're local, are traveling, or starting a new profession. Some of you are here today. I'm just going to invite you to come and to kneel at this altar here at this time, that we may speak a word of blessing over you. So we're not out to embarrass. We just invite you to come forward here and join us up front. And if you are joining us online, I just invite you to put your name in the chat or to put it out there on Facebook Live that we may be praying for you as well. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to live a life that will bring glory to you. You have equipped us with your wisdom. You are calling us to be alert, to be filled with your spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you've blessed us with. I pray for your blessing upon each graduate here and all who are joining us online. As they begin this new chapter, as they enter these mission fields where they will grow in community, thank you for what they will learn. Thank you for the friendships, relationships that will become blessings to them. And thank you for the blessing that they will be. Lord, empower them. Remind them daily of your presence. Enable them to continue to grow in their relationship with you. Some of those kneeling at this altar kneeled here or were brought to this altar as infants at baptism or in churches like this. Some were confirmed. Now as we raise our hands over them, we pray that you will continue to bless them in this journey. Remind them, O oh God, that not only are you with them, but that your grace is sufficient for all they will face. And I have no doubt, O oh Lord, with you, with them, this world will be a better place as you use each one. Bless and watch over them, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
you may rise. And thank you for being willing to come forward. I remind you that on each campus, there are college chaplains. In the United Methodist tradition, this is one of our strongest ministries. So if you have not yet connected or heard from your chaplains at the universities, at the places you will be attending, know and I hope that you will grow these connections. May that feeding continue. Amen. Pastor Helen is about to lead us in our morning prayer and for all that we'll be praying for with the people in Haiti and all that's happening in Afghanistan as we pray for the well-being and safety of all. We're asking your prayers for the Sexton family as well. This coming Saturday, we will be celebrating the life of Helen Sexton. We had a funeral, but that was during COVID, so this will be an opportunity to uh, truly celebrate her life. And so as her church family, you are invited to view this service online the same way you got here today uh, through our Zoom connection on our church webpage. You can view the service. It's this coming Saturday at 1 o'clock, again for Helen Sexton. We have to offer a prayer of confession. Thank you. <laughs> Let us offer together our prayer of confession. Lord, we have lived as unwise people. God, forgive us for wasting time. We have been foolish. Jesus, forgive us for not understanding your will. We have filled ourselves with the wine of worldliness. Holy Spirit, forgive us for not being filled with you. We have forsaken your spiritual food. Grant, triune God of grace, forgive us for not drawing our strength from your bread of heaven. Almighty God, please add to your mighty deeds by forgiving our transgressions. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. The Lord is gracious to us and gentle. The Lord heals our souls with love. The Lord is merciful, providing spiritual food for the hungry. Be healed in your hearts and be fed in your souls by the forgiveness found in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We give thanks for all the ways that you give back to God. The offering of your gifts, your financial gifts, continue to enable the ministries of the church. For all who are giving online or mailing your gifts to the church, we thank you. There's also a plate up front here for any of you in who have gathered in person to bring your gifts today. There's something about coming forward. You are offering yourself your gifts back to God. We give thanks as you continue to enable, as you continue to bless, and are blessed through the ministry that Christ Jesus invites us to. Thank you. This time, Pastor Helen will lead us in our morning prayer. Friends in Christ, let us pray. Creator, our parent, thank you for the good gift of your wisdom. Help us to recognize your will. Help us to open our minds and hearts wider to your will. Help us to do your will more and more in your world. You lead us to life. May we follow. Jesus, our Lord, thank you for the good gift of your love. Help us to see you in our neighbors. Help us to open our minds and hearts wider to your presence in our neighbors. Help us to love our neighbors more and more as you do. You lead us to love. May we follow. Holy Spirit, our guide, you breathe grace into us and through us. Thank you for the good gift of your inspiration. Fill our minds, fill our hearts, guard our thoughts, guide our actions. Help us to find and follow the light of Christ in every situation. You lead us to grow. May we follow. God, our all in all, we praise you for the joy that comes from living together with you and our neighbors. Help us to seek your goodness, your blessing, your grace in every relationship. Grant us the care, the courage, 
and the creativity to respond with your wisdom to the needs which you reveal to us. We pray for the people of Haiti, Afghanistan, Florida, Louisiana. We pray for first responders, for those who serve in the military and for their families. We pray for leaders and caregivers, public servants, and friendly strangers. We pray for families, students, and staff as we prepare together for a new school year. We pray for friends, neighbors, and loved ones who are struggling with illness, loss, or injury as we seek healing together. We pray for communities, nations, and the world as together we seek wellness, justice, and peace for all people. We praise you and give you thanks for the blessing and the joy of new life available to all people in every circumstance through your Son. In his words we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite all who are able to please rise as we join in singing our closing hymn found in the faith we sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
please be seated. Thank you. It's about a week ago. Betsy was cleaning out. We have a walk-in closet that we share. She said, Jim, you are a hoarder when it comes to clothes. Some of this just needs to go. So there was a pile of these treasures I parted with. And so uh, in selecting a shirt yesterday, I just randomly reached over for a t-shirt and put it on. Here it was my shirt from our mission trip to Haiti in 2018. Wearing it and I was thinking about the people and the work we we're part of and then heard the terrible news that unfolded in Haiti. And suddenly that mission took on new meaning. In fact, even going in and out of the grocery store, people saw Haiti and said, oh, they said, how horrible, and we're praying for them. And just, it sparked conversation. I was so grateful and am grateful for the connection that we have, and we'll be building on that connection and stay tuned through UMCOR as we'll be reaching out for ways that we can be helping in Haiti. I'm grateful for what has already been established that we can build upon. I am grateful for the faith journey that you have each been on what we have to build upon as a community. Knowing that God is here for us and knowing that as we gather, we have this promise that Paul shared with us, that as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't stay here but rather the joy and the strength that we find in offering praise and thanksgiving to God will be our source of strength as we reach out to the people of Haiti, as we pray for our leaders, and as we find strength to face the challenges of school and of work. Therefore, let us go forth with the hope of knowing that Christ goes forth with us always. So these are complex times. Let us look carefully how you walk, not blundering along like fools, but as those who are wise with the wisdom of Christ. Wherever we go and whatever happens to us, we will give thanks to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.